Okay, let's dive into how to build step functions from AWS using Rust. Step functions are really powerful in terms of serverless workflows because you can chain together multiple operations and take the input of one Lambda function, process it, and then put the output into another Lambda function. And what's really fun about it is you can drag and drop and create your own workflows, almost like working with Legos. And you can see here, this is a diagram of the workflow. And then when it runs, you can actually introspect and go right into the details of what one function is delivering and what the other one is receiving. And this is incredible in terms of debugging. So uh, can you do this in Rust? Yes, you can. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at how you would do this in Rust. Uh, first up, I have a step functions directory right here. And inside I have a Rust Marco, which will be the first step function. And then I have a Rust Polo. All I needed to do in order to create this was use the excellent Cargo Lambda library, uh, which you can see here, I just said Cargo Lambda New Rust Marco. Now, if we go into the source code right here and we take a look at it, uh, I have an input here, which is the script. And this is the, um, actually, let's go to this one right here, which is the name. And uh, this would be the input to the function. In terms of the output, we would have uh, the payload that's being sent. The handler is where all the work is done. I have an async handler right here. And we say let name event dot payload name. So I, I take uh, the name value from the JSON payload. And I say, listen, if the name is Marco, then uh, I would actually like to make the payload body Polo. Otherwise, uh, let's make it nobody. Uh, and I also add some tracing here so that I can have some debugging inside of my Lambda console. Now, next, all I have to do is prepare the response, right? And so this will be the return payload. It's automatically serialized for us when we send the OK. And the payload body right here is, again, just what's inside of here. Now, to, to deploy this or run it or whatever, I like to use make files. And so what I do here is I say make release, and all it does is run cargo lambda build release. We can actually uh, go into this directory real quick and take a look at it. And let's go to uh, step functions, uh, Marco, Rust Marco here. And we can say make release, and we can see what, what it does. Right, there we go, right? It's already been released, so we don't have to do anything. Uh, and then if I say make deploy, it would it would then go ahead and redeploy the function. Uh, you can see again, since it didn't have to do anything, it was, it was very fast. Now, if I want to invoke it and see uh, what the payload will actually be, uh, I would have to say cargo lambda invoke remote, put the name of the AWS lambda function here, and then send in the payload. In this case, again, the make file makes it easy. I just go ahead and say, make invoke. Now what's great uh, about this is then I can do the same thing for the second one. So let's go over to uh, Rust Polo here. Let's look at this one. So I know that I'm gonna have to accept a payload. That's the, the body of the other Lambda. And then I'm going to return uh, a payload as well. So at first I say, uh, let the name is equal to payload and, payload. and then if I look for the word Polo, right? That was the successful response from Marco. I say you win, otherwise I say you lose. And again, I add some tracing here. Very simple, yet again, I just add a response right here, which gets serialized and sent back to the user. Uh, yet again, if I just go ahead and I CD up here and we go into the Rust uh, Polo, right, we can say make invoke. And this uh, will be a little bit different, but not much, which is that I'm going to send in the payload polo, right? And this would say you win. Now, if I want to change it, for example, when I say, you know, no, for example, and we change that, it's going to say you lose, right? So uh, a, a very, very easy and convenient way to build uh, Lambda functions. And you can see it's very straightforward. So now to use them, what do we do? So we can go over to the step functions right here. And let's actually just make a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and say create new state machine go next, and it's just like Legos. I just drag one, and we can call this one, um, you know, Rust Marco. And then we could build uh, another one uh, after this one. But first, let's give it the uh, the Rust Marco here, which is this one. Uh, and then we drag a second one, and we say, 
rest polo. And this would be, instead of lambda invoke, we'll call it rest polo. Rest polo. There we go. And then again, we just go ahead and choose this and we say rest polo. Now, what's beautiful about this is that uh, we're done. And it gives me the, uh, the JSON output if I want to copy this and store it somewhere. But you can see here, here's how it works. Once I've verified that that's what I want, then I can name it uh, a step function and we'll call this Rust Marco uh, Polo Chain. And we can go ahead and say create state machine. Now, in order to execute it, I could call it from a command line, which is actually a nice way to do it. Or I just say start, it gives it a optional globally unique ID. And then here's where we have to chain things together. I would just say main here, and we would say Marco. And this will start the chain. We go over, we can watch it actually being executed. And we can say the first input uh, right here, which you can see that the the payload that was returned was uh, Polo. And then we can here see this one is, is you win. So, so really straightforward actually to to, to run this. Now, if we want to do a failed execution, let's go ahead and uh, do another one. So let's go back to this and we'll do another, and let's just leave this default here and you can see it'll actually blow up. It won't work. So, uh-oh, there's a problem, error message, right? And we can see that it failed. So it's very good debugging uh, as well. And, and this is a great way to build reproducible services uh, with Rust and AWS and uh, hopefully give this a try. Here is the architecture of an AWS Rust Lambda that is a systems programming type Lambda. What does it do? Well, it is able to asynchronously communicate with S3. S3 could contain thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files, and it could asynchronously go through, go to all the buckets, look inside of each bucket for each object, and then do some kind of operation. In this particular Lambda, which is a monitoring Lambda, I calculate every single object and put in a total. In this case, it takes about three seconds to, to run my particular bucket configuration. And then I'm able to later put that into a dashboard, a command line tool, perhaps some kind of monitoring or billing system. And it's all done through the power of the async Rust SDK. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work. First step, we have the AWS SDK here, and you can see an example of, of what it looks like, uh, is that you first use whatever particular component of the SDK, you use Tokyo, which is async library. And in this particular environment here, you can show how it will asynchronously list potentially all the tables inside of the AWS environment. Now that you've seen how this works, let's go ahead and look at the code itself. So if we go into GitHub code spaces, I've got a async AWS Lambda here, and you can see some of the code where I say use AWS SDK S3. I make a AWS S3 client first, then I make a, a list of all buckets uh, function here. You can see I say pub async list all the buckets. So again, the async gives us the ability to uh, run this in a network async way. And then finally, I am able to calculate the size of the bucket by summing every single object in the bucket, which is nice. Finally, what I do here is I use uh, the list buckets to get a list of all the buckets in the account. Uh, and then this goes through and creates the bucket sizes. Now, if I go to the main here, all this does is use Lambda to uh, create a human readable helper method. And then in terms of the, the function handler here, the function handler is able to uh, run that code uh, that we set up previously uh, and then return back the response. Now, inside of this uh, particular main method here, it then goes through and calls those other methods. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cargo file as well. So inside this cargo file, you can see here, I've got some deserialization library. I have the async library of AWS and I have that human size library. That's it. And then in terms of the make file, we can see here that in order to invoke it, I can just go ahead and run this uh, make file. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll actually change the name to be something a little bit slicker. I'll just say uh, run or how about count? Let's go ahead and do that. 
and we'll say make invoke. Uh, and then in this particular example, O, I don't have cargo Lambda uh, enabled, easy to fix. Let's go ahead and source our virtual environment here, which is how I have cargo Lambda installed. Now, if I run it, well, it'll take about three seconds and I will synchronize uh, inside and count the total storage. In this case, 114 gigabytes across all the buckets that I have. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Lambda itself. If we go over to Lambda, you can see here that I have this async Lambda. I can also test it inside of here. I just go to test here. You can see a previous invocation. Uh, in this case, I just have a payload that says name run. It's really a, an empty payload. I go ahead and click test. And you can see it run in action. So this is a great pattern with Rust uh, is to have high performance systems monitoring lambdas. Again, this one does something where it calculates all the bucket sizes, but you could see how you could build things that talk to other components like EFS or maybe uh, the uh, also the EMR or maybe to all your EBS storage or some kind of systems monitoring uh, tool that is able to run very, very efficiently and also at a low duration. In this case, this only took me uh, about two and a half seconds to run and I'm able to run it at the lowest level as well. So it's a very low memory usage uh, Lambda. So in a nutshell, it's easy to build uh, high performance systems tools using Rust. In this case, we are able to hook it into a Lambda and I can invoke it from a command tool, invoke it on a terminal, uh, invoke it inside of a event, let's say a timer once a day and or put it into a dashboard. So what is Distrolist? One of the ways to think about Distrolist is it is a lean, secure, and consistent container. One way to think about it as an analogy is it would be like a meal that's organic that is composed of just rice and beans. Rice and beans is a complete protein when combined together, but also very healthy because it contains simple ingredients, including fiber, and complete proteins. So let's go ahead and break this down component by component. First up, we have minimizing runtime footprint. Distrolist containers, like a meal of rice and beans, only includes the most essential elements. You don't need fancy ingredients to make a nutritious meal, just like distrolist containers only require the necessary components to run the application, keeping it lean and efficient. Also focus on security. A simple meal of rice and beans reduces the risk of a food allergy. Similarly, distrolist containers reduce potential security vulnerabilities by cutting out non-essential software that could be exploited. In terms of simplicity and maintainability, it's a straightforward way to prepare rice and beans and clean up as a breeze. Likewise, distrolist containers are simple to manage because there's less that can go wrong and any issue is easy to trace, ensuring a smooth operation. Finally, in terms of reproducibility, it's easy to replicate a meal of rice and beans. Distrolist containers are reproducible due to the simplicity. This consistency ensures that all developers work with the same runtime environment, minimizing discrepancies and confusion. Finally, with multi-language support, much like the meal of rice and beans that provides a complete protein source for anyone, regardless of dietary preferences, distrolist containers can host applications written in various programming languages, offering a versatile platform for developers. Really, in a nutshell, Google distrolist containers is a lot like a simple yet complete meal of rice and beans offering everything needed and nothing more. They're a secure, maintainable, reproducible, and inclusive environment for deploying applications, making them a nutritious and budget-friendly choice for your software diet.